I like to talk about the safety of the life suction and why our technique is the best and today I like to talk about safety and need for life suction. Life suction is actually the most popular surgery in the world today. When I came from America after working there for 25 years to Sri Lanka, I came to retire but I didn't realize that there's a huge demand for life suction in Sri Lanka as well. But still, most people do not know why they need a life suction. And today the obesity has become an epidemic in the world. Only 13% of the Americans were obese in 1962, but by 2008 that number has increased to 34%. This is not because of bad genes, this is actually because of increased amount of bad food in America. The same thing is happening in Sri Lanka today and I see a lot of people eating a lot of animal foods such as dairy food, meat as well as a lot of sugar and processed foods and therefore the obesity has increased in Sri Lanka at an alarming rate. We should never uh, allow our children to get obese because obese children become obese adults easily. And obesity is the main reason why people with other complications such as high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, strokes, cancer and so on. So when you're obese, you have a short life. Before even doctors knew about it, the insurance agents or actuarians had found out about this. So in, in fact, the insurance premiums for obese people were higher than for slim people. Even before the doctors actually discovered the complications of obesity. So when you're obese, you collect fat in storage areas. These are abdomen, underarm, back, upper back, and lower back, inner thighs, outer thighs, and sometimes the lower face regions. And when the fat collects, your skin also grows to accommodate that. And as time goes by, the skin gets very loose, and loose skin doesn't make you pretty, loose skin makes you ugly. And if you go and go ahead and do diet and exercise and lose this weight, what happens is that you never lose that loose skin. It gets worse and everything starts hanging underarm, the breast, the abdomen, the inner thighs, outer thighs, and you become very ugly. This is a good example of it right here. And that's why we need liposuction. We need liposuction to make a person who are overweight or obese to go back to a beautiful shape without all that skin looseness because if you get the looseness of the skin the only solution then is to cut and stitch the skin back and when you cut and stitch such as doing thumb tucks, arm tucks, wrist lifts, uh, body lifts, thigh tucks you end up with a lot of scars for the rest of your life and you might even become ugly. So with the new techniques for liposuction we have techniques which does not cause anybody to die unlike the older techniques. Older techniques had a risk of dying in America in the best of hospitals of 1 in 5,000. In Sri Lanka the risk is much higher and we hear about people dying in hospitals even today. But with our technique which is only available through me at this point in Sri Lanka, we do the Thomason anesthesia and power assisted life suction and we can remove fat from anybody's collections such as abdomen, underarm, out thighs, inner thighs, backs, lower face without any risk. The patient can go home next day and go to work and usually can resume all the exercise in about one week. And I have performed about 12,000 of these already and 2,000 of these were done in Sri Lanka without a single complication. And it's mainly due to the technique we use and I'm a member of the World Academy of Cosmetic Surgeons as well as American Academy of Cosmetic Surgeons and there are other doctors who perform these techniques around the world and in America in a recent year there were 400,000 surgeries performed 
with this technique 400,000 is 4 lakhs of live suctions and nobody died from it this technique even in this large collection and with the old technique there were complications like bleeding infections pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis but we don't get any of these complications and also we get much better results with old techniques since the fat is not softened since the fat is not removed with new techniques you end up with scars inside so you get irregularities on the skin skin looks ugly although skin may get a little tight skin may develop dips irregularities such as shown in this picture and also you may end up staying in hospital for longer rarely you might be even requiring transfusions and a lot of infections can happen because of the bleeding inside and none of these happen with our new technique and also with the old technique the fat cannot be successfully used for grafting which you can read in another presentation how we can make a person look 20 years younger how we can lift a breast or buttocks or even make your hands look younger or do a calf rejuvenation and therefore the new technique becomes even more important or more valuable to a person and when you get a bad result it's hard to fix some of the very famous people i have known have come to me for consultations to fix the problems they got with the old technique and you get very regular results such as shown in this picture or in this picture and they're very hard to fix of course there are some new techniques we use such as fat grafting and lab shifting to get results such as shown in this picture this before and after if you have got a bad result from the old technique but it's not easy it's much easier to do it properly in the first place and so you don't have any complications and we should also know about risk of general anesthesia if you just put somebody into sleep you put 10,000 people into sleep one person will die just from the general anesthesia so when you add the risk of the surgery itself that number goes up we know for liposuction in best of hospitals it's one in five thousand we know for tummy tucks in best of hospitals is one in three thousand these numbers are much higher in sri lanka and two percent of all icu admissions today are due to complication of general anesthesia and when you undergo general anesthesia you have more pain not less pain because right after the surgery you wake up with a huge amount of pain requiring you to stay in hospitals and obtain pain medications you get nausea and vomiting in about 30% of the people there's damage to the teeth in about 1 in 4,500 people there's sore throat damage to your voice box and phylaxis and cardiovascular collapse in some patients respiratory depression and those are some of the reasons why people die and you can also get aspiration pneumonia because when you put somebody under sleep they can't they don't have a gag reflex which protects their lungs there's hypothermia risk, brain damage which can happen due to hypoxia, nerve injuries and some people are fully aware of the surgery so they feel everything and suffer a lot and that's not that uncommon. There's embolism, yeah, embolism and thrombus or venous embolism as a result of the embolism which can happen due to uh, complication of general anesthesia and sometimes you get back pain, you get headaches sometimes serious side effects that can cause you to die such as malignant hypothermia and also you can get pneumothorax so we have explained all these serious side effects a lot of times people go for anesthesia and they just tell the doctor just put me to sleep I don't feel anything but they don't realize that they are going through all this risk and the loved one may not see them again and here's a case of embolism yeah, embolism is common with pelvic operations. Venous from embolism is very common with general anesthesia because when you put to sleep, somebody to sleep, they can't move. When they immobile, immobile, they make blood clots in their veins which can move to their lungs and cause what we call pulmonary embolism. And that can be a deadly complication. When you try to lose weight, we tell patients to come to the right weight for your height. For example, if you are 5 foot, then you should be 51 kilograms in weight if you are a 5 foot 6 person then your weight should be 62 kilograms similarly a 6 foot person would be 73 
kilograms and we have heard about gastric bypass surgeries recently a lot of people have got in trouble by going uh, this route there was a study done in University of Washington and that study showed that 2% of the people that is 1 in 50 people die during gastric bypass surgery and they also noticed that if the surgeon is not experienced enough to perform this surgery about 10% of the people die that is 1 in 10 and in contrast I myself have performed over 12,000 liposuction without anybody dying and not only that there are a lot of other complications dumping syndrome happens to 7 out of 10 people that means right after me they feel faintish they get palpitations sometimes they pass out vitamin B12 deficiency is found in 40% of the people even after the supplementation that's because the stomach is very important for the absorption of vitamin B12 uh, and B12 is very important for our general health anemia is found in 39% of the patients hospital readmission for complications found in 1 in 4 almost 1 in uh, I'm sorry 4 in 10 patients incisional hernia was found in 2 in 10 depression in 23% of the patients so depression is very common after gastric bypass surgery because mainly because your nutrition is now normal not normal you're not absorbing the nutrients you need for the body and you, you always get brain dysfunction when you have bad nutrition and there are other complications as well I have listed here so gastric bypass surgery is definitely the worst option for you you don't want to do gastric bypass surgery to lose weight and what happens after gastric bypass surgery although you might look pretty when you're obese when you lose weight in a rapid fashion you get very severe aging on the body your face get wrinkled up you look very much older and also you get severe skin laxity everything start hanging and you don't look like a human being anymore you look like some kind of an animal and just to get that shape back you need so many cutting surgeries that means a lot of scars in your body where you cut the skin and stitch up and that's not a good look so this is definitely not the way to go best way to lose weight is to eat the right food if, the, if a human being eats the right food the body knows what to do and the wrong food is the animal food such as dairy food meat fish and eggs our body is not evolved to eat this kind of food so we don't want to eat the wrong food because it's the same food like dairy and meat which causes cancer which causes heart disease and strokes as well as many other diseases and definitely will die early if you eat this food and definitely get obese you also want to avoid sugar sugar is poisonous for us so sugar of any kind should be avoided you should also try to avoid the fruits which are high in sugar so you want to avoid cola drinks, fruit drinks and bananas, uh, pineapples and mangoes and fruits which are very sweet and also avoid the other toxins such as MSG and aspartame <clears throat> if you get any kind of packaged food you are sure to find preservatives which are toxic to you and sometimes more often than not they would also include chemicals like MSG that is monosodium glutamate and aspartame which are toxic to you so best diet is raw vegetables raw vegetable you can eat it with a salad dressing or you can eat it actually raw it would be even better and you should eat about three to four three four or five kinds of vegetables raw when you're cooking better not use any other kind of oil other than coconut oil because coconut oil make you lose weight in small amounts and also provides with omega-3 healthy for your heart prevents aging prevents all shamans do not use soy products soy oil is not safe soy is toxic to human beings 
and among the toxic effects of soya includes thyroid toxicity and because soya contains phytates you will not absorb other essential nutrients when you are eating soy food it also contains toxic manganese and therefore we don't want to eat any soy products you want to do aerobic exercises about 15 minutes daily then there are drugs we can use but we definitely don't recommend any other drugs out there which you can get from a western physician especially all stat or only causes severe side effects such as oil spotting, flatus, gold stones, fecal incontinence, tooth disorder so if you are not eating the right kind of food you don't need to take any of these and there are the rare side effects and previously a lot of the drugs we use for weight loss has caused heart problems and were discontinued so anything comes out today you have to take it you should not take it for a long time because we don't know when uh, the toxic effects come out and then they recall it by that time it's too late for the patients who took that new drug and also do not follow dangerous and unproven techniques I've heard of hot clay treatments in Sri Lanka and I've seen people damaging their skin severely sometimes they do this to reduce the breast size and end up damaging their skin on the breast and it's severe laxity of the breast sometimes it's even hard to fix this breast with surgery because their skin has got very thin and damaged do not use massages and do not use a lot of the vitamins things like green tea don't have much of effect and there are dangerous creams people try to sell you on over-the-counter market those are also dangerous if you want to use supplements the best supplements for weight loss are natural supplements we use a combination of red raspberry ketones phenylalanine and tyrosine which are not that expensive and you can use it every day to lose that inner fat we also use beta injections which is good for anti-aging as well as weight loss sometimes we use resveratrol and glutathione injections which actually cleans your liver takes the toxins out of your liver which you have collected from the bad diet and helps you to lose weight when you combine these things with proper uh, proper diet and aerobic exercise you can lose about two kilograms per month you can get more details about what kind of toxins are in your diet by reading the book Sadha Tarani Rahas which is right now in Sinhalese